Okay, so it's going to be a really quick tutorial on how to set up the remote launching system. Now, I'm not going to use this little setup I have here, but we are going to go ahead and uh, grab the items up and go ahead and place a brand new system. So you're going to need a connector per group of missiles you want. A uh, display, you can have as many as you want. You'll have one command controller per launch site. If you have multiple sites, you'll need more than one of those. Same goes for the antenna. You'll need an antenna per command controller in order to get the remote system to work. Um, so we'll go ahead and let's actually remove this and we'll recycle this spot here. So we'll have a command controller here. Uh, you can place this a certain distance. The distance is like about 10 to 20 blocks. I don't know the exact off the top of my head. You'll have to just check it and make sure you're doing whatever right. Uh, we'll go ahead and place the antenna here. And we'll get this built up. Ignore the fact that that doesn't render right. We still have not updated the models with the new, newest versions. But there's your basic setup here. Uh, you can place the display anywhere. I usually prefer to play it on top of the command controller. Um, so you can do it just about anywhere you want to put it at. You're going to want to make sure that the antenna is in online mode as well as generate network. Shift right click to generate the network. Without the network it will not connect to other antennas. Uh, and then you want to make sure it's on online mode. By default it should be in online mode. If it's not just cycle through and make sure it's on its correct mode type. After you get that set up. You want to grab the data chip and you're going to want to link the command controller to the display. So that's the controller to display. Right now it does not work in the other direction, but we may fix that later. You then want to connect your silo connector to this. That'll give you actual connection. You then want to name it. So you want to give it some kind of ID that's going to be reusable. We're just going to call it eight or yeah, we'll just call it one B. And this would just be like silo group, like one or something. Uh, the display name is just for you to see so you remember what it's called and then your group ID is what's actually used to encode the system. So if you change the group ID, anything that was encoded to it will actually no longer function properly. Um, you can also set the display name of this as well. So this will be like silo uh, site one. And you can save that. Uh, ignore the GUI. This is not finished yet. There's supposed to be some frequency set stuff in here as well, but we have not got around to that. Right now, it's just doing the basics. Now, this is a finished system, but of course, we have no silos connected to it. In order to connect silos, you just need to place them down and then link them as if you would link them to a normal controller. So we're just going to place a couple like this. And you'll just do this real quick and you'll right, shift right click to pick up the data. Right click. If you ever have a problem where it says it cannot link or invalid link, just shift right click on the ground to set the data to something random. Then shift right click again and then click again. Sometimes when you store the data, it gets set incorrectly. If this decides to change its randomized uh, ID at some point, it'll stop working. Especially if you save and quit, the uh, data in here is no longer valid if you save and quit. Um, so this is all linked up and set up. Now if we go to this and we click the refresh button, it'll show you all of your stuff. Uh, these buttons on the bottom will change what silo you're looking at. So that is actually looking at this silo over here. Unfortunately, I have removed the silos connected to this. So if we actually open this up and refresh it, it thinks it's connected to silos still. I have not adjusted the code to uh, clear out invalid and broken silos. So there was three silos at some point here, but they were removed during testing. So if you open this up, you'll see the current group. So this is going to be everything connected to this machine but it's going to look at the first connector. If you had more than one connector, you'd be able to page left and right to look at them. You can then go into each silo and name them. You will have to name them or they will not work. So this is silo A. You hit the save button right here to save. You can then go back out and you can call this silo B. And you can come in here and call this C. And that'll get them all saved. And you can fire them all from here. Uh, the light right here will indicate the status of them. Um, online if they can be connected to, yellow if they exist but they're not functioning, red if it cannot connect to them at all. Um, as you notice if we go to here it's kind of going no connection because it can't find them but it thinks they still exist for some reason. There's some kind of weird bug going on in there. But this will give you your status and then you can fire. So if we actually click these we aren't going to get any firing effect from this because there's no missiles in there. Um, eventually this will be updated to indicate like maybe a blue status light or something saying that there's no missile in here uh, or some kind of effect. Uh, there will be a render eventually here to tell you what kind of missile you have loaded so you know what's doing what. But in order to get the uh, the systems to work, so let's, um, let's first go ahead and encode a random location. So we're going to aim, yeah, we'll aim right here in the cluster here. So you can, in order to set the location, you can either open up the GUI and set it, or you can use the radar gun, which is I just used, and uh, you can right click and transfer to each one of these individually. This is the manual way of doing it, of course. This is not the most devised way to do it. This will, of course, if we open this up and we actually look at each one of these, should set the data. It's not refreshing though. Oh well. 
those actually will have the correct information. I actually think what is going on here is I think that there's a bug still available in this current version where if there's no missile in here, it will not update the uh, the data. Yeah, there it goes. It's showing the data now, but it won't update it if there's no missile in the tube, in the GUI. So you'll have to make sure there's a missile in here. Now, if we actually go in here and we click fire on each one of these, these will all go up in the air and they will come back down here. Now, we're not going to wait for those to impact as we're going to go ahead and finish this up here. So in order to get the encoding part to work, uh, you just want to grab either one. So your remote detonator will just trigger at the launch, so you would still have to have a preset coordinate system. The laser detonator will actually trigger and attack the location. So you want to pick one of your things. You want to stick it in here, and you want to encode. So we'll encode that to launch array. It'll actually tell you on the thing what it current group is attached to, what silo it's attached to, and it will broadcast everything. So if you have multiple site groups with all the same ID information, it will fire all the site groups. It will also give you errors back saying it couldn't fire missiles from all the groups as well. That's going to be fixed here eventually. So we've got these both encoded. So we got one encoded to A and one encoded to B. And uh, looks like our missiles actually did impact. I think they did at least. They look like it. I think there's a cake over here. No. Oh well. More more work to fix, I guess. So let's go ahead and uh, get a different explosive here since that one was acting up a little bit. So if we do the remote detonator, it'll fire, and it'll come down right on that location which we previously targeted. It'll go up. It takes about a few seconds to go up. It's about the same time. to Actually, it's a little slower to come down because it's doing gravity, but that depends on the engine you're using. If you're using a slower engine, then gravity could be faster. It depends on uh, the thing. This is going to fall at 9.6 um, meters per second per second. There we go. That worked. Now if we use the laser detonator and say we aim right there, it'll actually tell that to uh, fire. And of course you see we got some error codes down at the bottom. We're saying unknown group uh, B. That's actually that declaring that it can't find that uh, group. There we go. It's coming down exactly where we pointed it at. Now we can continuously reload this and we can continuously fire these and do whatever we want with them. So we can fire that right over there. That's pretty much it. It's not too hard to set these up. If you're having any issues with them, go ahead and report to the bug tracker. These are not exactly heavily tested server side. We're still in some of the earlier test phases and only focusing client side only. But uh, they won't crash server side, at least as far as we know. But uh, that's been a quick tutorial. I'll end up making a more revised, better version of this here later. So don't worry if you didn't answer all your questions.